Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to beat Dark Souls 3 only using Pyromancy. So first off, you should pick the Pyromancer class, choose whatever gift you want, and let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you'll notice is that you start with a ring which boosts Pyromancy, and this is one of the rings that should never leave your finger during this run. So make your way through the graveyard, burn the local grave robbers to a crisp, and then pick up the Ashen Estus Flask. This will give you more than enough FP to beat Gundyr. Also make sure you pick up any Titanite you find lying around, since you're going to need it to upgrade your Pyromancy Glove. Then burn the heck out of Gundyr. One of the main challenges of only using Pyromancy is that your spells take a while to wind up and release. But if you take your time and play carefully, then it shouldn't be much of an issue for you. Gundyr is pretty weak to fire, since he's apparently made of crude oil on the inside. So do your part in expediating climate change and banish him to the ozone. Now once you get to Firelink, you should pull a Tarzan maneuver on this tree here so you can get to the roof. On the rafters inside, you'll find your first Estus Shard. And if you bust through this false wall over here, then you'll find the Silver Serpent Ring. This is very important because it will increase the amount of cash you get from incinerating your enemies. Now allot your Estus Flasks with Andre. I find a ratio of 2 yellow to 1 blue works out pretty well. Now go outside and fight off the homeless guy who just refuses to leave. Oh, you mastered the blade, did you? Well then parry this. Anyways, he'll drop some ratty looking but very lightweight clothing, and you can use his souls to begin leveling up your attunement to increase your FP. Now burn your way through Lothric. Hollows are pretty weak to fire, so they shouldn't give you too much trouble. Some of them may try to hide behind metal shields, but what they don't realize is that metal conducts heat. So sizzle them through their own shields like you're cooking up some bacon. Vort might try to counteract your flame fingers with his Colgate breath, but you're just too hot to handle, so fry his face off. Now for this build, you'll want to level up your attunement to 35 and your vigor to 28. These are the soft caps for these stats, and you'll be needing some spare levels for Intelligence and Faith later on. Now go to the Undead Settlement and torch everything that gets in your way. Dogs are the bane of the pure Pyromancer since they never freaking hold still, so your best option is to use your Pyromancy Glove's weapon art against them since it fires up quickly and stuns them with every hit. While you're in the area, you should find Yul and recruit him. He'll come in handy later. Now run over here where the Firebomb Brigade hangs out, walk down to the end of this pier, and pick up the Fire Clutch Ring. This ring is very important since it will increase all fire-based damage you put out by 15%. Now it will also give you a 10% penalty to your physical absorption, but since you're going to be fire blasting your enemies from a distance anyways, it's not really a big deal. Anyways, give the Bomber Boys a taste of their own medicine and go and recruit Cornix. He's also a Pyromancer, and he can upgrade your Pyromancy Glove using Titanite. Then venture down into the sewers, make some rat patties for the road, and collect the mighty Kaistus once again. You won't be punching anything with it this time around, but you will be making use of its weapon art. Perseverance. This will give you amazing poise and defense for a few seconds for a very small FP cost, so it's pretty useful for those times when you need to run past large groups of enemies. As you can see, sometimes enemies will get stuck on the terrain, which makes for good opportunities to practice your free aim fireball skills. Now run through the crucifixion woods to get to this large puddle here. The puddle guardian will probably be pretty ticked off at you for disturbing his waters, so just use perseverance to withstand his blows as he tries to beat the snot out of you and pick up the pyromancy tome from behind the tree. While you're in the area, you can also pick up this ratty looking face mask, by now the miasma has mostly lifted from Lothric and the surrounding areas, but you can never be too careful. Anyways, give the Pyromancy Tome to Cornix, and you'll be able to buy Fire Orb from him. Fire Orb hits pretty hard in comparison to Fireball, so use it to burn the crap out of the Bloodborne Reject and pick up the ring he was guarding. The Sage Ring will make your casting speed a bit faster, so I recommend that you wear it for the time being. Fire Orb also does a fair bit of splash damage to closely grouped enemies, so make sure to use that to your advantage. Now go and climb up this super tall ladder, bust on through this false wall at the top, and take the ashes you find and give them to the Shrine Handmaiden so that you can buy Titanite from her. Then take the elevator that's above the ladder, 
drop off this ledge here, and you can find a couple of titanite lizards on the other side. Then take on Boulder Man. He spits boulders, and you want to be able to as well, so melt him down and steal his soul. Then just no-scope the rotten tree so you can get the transposing kill, and trade the boulder soul for the boulder heave pyromancy. That was the only boss soul you really need, so feel free to cash in the rest of them. Now boulder heave has short range, but it also hits pretty hard and has splash damage. I'd still recommend that you keep fireballs handy, as they can be used to finish off opponents at low health, and that way you save on FP. Now jump off the tower elevator so you can meet up with Sigward. Now, little known fact about Sigward is that he's actually an empty suit of armor possessed by a guy who incinerated himself by messing around with the forbidden pyromancy of immolation. So be warned about illegal pyromancies. Make sure you don't make the same mistake. Anyway, Sigward is still a real bro, and he'll help you defeat Magma Man. Needless to say, boulders work better than fireballs against this guy. Now climb up on the roof of the nearby house and pick up Flynn's ring. This will boost all physical damage you put out, and the lighter your clothes are, the bigger the damage boost. So that's why you've been collecting the lightest clothes you can find. As you can see, Flynn's ring makes boulder heave pretty deadly, so use it to beat the snot out of the local plague doctor. Trying to force me to buy medical insurance? This is Lothric, baby, so get out of here with that noise. Now for you, bandit boy. While you were studying knife throwing, I was catching knives with my teeth. Hmm. Anyways, drop down into this waterway beneath the cathedral. Watch out for the flying spaghetti monsters. They're pretty weak to spicy meatballs, so throw a few their way. And over here you'll find the Saint Tree Belvine. Holding this in your left hand will actually increase your casting speed up to maximum, so at this point you don't even need the Sage Ring anymore. Max casting speed should make your journey to becoming the ultimate glass cannon a little bit easier. And on that note, Lloyd's Sword Ring will boost your attack rating by 10%, if you can manage to stay at full health. Look at this dude, running up and buffing right in my face? I don't think so. Get Lloyded on, nerd. Anyhow, make sure to raise all the bridges and open up the front doors while you're in the cathedral. In this way, Sigward can follow you inside. However, it turns out that a dirty skin bandit has crawled inside him and is puppeting him around for his own nefarious purposes. So spit some rocks at his head, kick the snot out of him, and then wash Sigward clean at the well and reassemble him. The splash damage from Boulder Heave makes it an excellent choice against the Deacons of the Deep, so stone the heretics and crunch their souls for more power. Oh yeah. Now go talk to Yol. He will give you levels in exchange for hollowing. So go jump off a cliff repeatedly until you look like a sun-dried tomato. And once you're done leveling with Yol, you can take on the Pinhead Gang. They may be expert knife fighters, but they shouldn't have brought knives to a Molotov cocktail fight. Boneyard Brad over here is already half dead, so melt his bones down into lime and make concrete out of it. Or whatever the heck you want to do. Anyway, once you get to 28 Vigor, you can switch to just leveling Intelligence and Faith. These bony boys didn't level their intelligence, and look what happens to them. Natural selection, baby. Then as you run past this bonfire, you can find the Witch's Ring, which will give you a 20% attack rating boost to your pyromancies, including Boulder Heave. Then when you get to the lake with a giant crossbow shooting at you, you can find large titanite shards everywhere. And if you come over to this cave, you can find a gecko with a titanite chunk as well. This is where the free aim skills you've been practicing come in handy. Then climb back up onto the roof at Firelink so you can give a black firebomb to the nestlings in exchange for another titanite chunk. In the lava halls beneath the smoldering lake, you can find another pyromancy tome, which will allow you to buy Great Chaos Fireball. This is the ultimate pyromancy, at least as far as I'm concerned, although there is another option that you may prefer. To get it, you'll need to take down the King of the Gargoyles. Boulder Heave comes in handy here due to his obvious fire resistance, and this is probably the last time you'll even be using Boulder Heave. Then give the Gargoyle's soul to Ludlith, and he'll give you Chaos Bed Vestiges. Now, it requires 20 intelligence to use, and uses more FP than Great Chaos Fireball, so personally, I'm not a fan of it. Now that you're not using Boulder Heave anymore, you can wear whatever outfit you want. 
Good fashion is important if you're planning to visit an Orlando. Another advantage Chaos Fireball has over bed vestiges is the pool of lava it leaves behind, which is good for cooking crocodiles. The lava may not last very long, but that's perfectly fine since otherwise it might char the meat. Nobody likes charred meat. Eventually, you'll meet up with Siegward and you can share a six-pack with him. Just make sure you sniff test whatever he gives you since, being a suit of armor, he might be drinking WD-40 or something. Now up the staircase of doom you go. Wearing the Kaistis and flexing your abs might be the only way to stop these ferocious canines from eviscerating you, so it's a good thing you picked up the Kaistis earlier. Pontiff can be a little annoying to fight since he can actually dodge your fireballs, but seeing as his own energy attacks are pretty pathetic, he really doesn't stand a chance then does he? And what do you even say about An Orlando? Silver Knights are just as cookable as ever. There does seem to be a bit of a pest problem going on, but never fear, Napalm is here, liquidating tarantulas and slug monsters alike. And eventually you should find enough titanite chunks to upgrade your glove to plus nine. The petroleum vipers might be hiding some of it, being the slippery snakes they are, so smoke them out of their hidey holes and take it for yourself. Then once you get down into the sewers, you should oxidize this mimic so you can get the Dark Clutch Ring. This does what Fire Clutch Ring does, but for dark damage instead of fire. Maybe that was obvious, I'm not sure. You can also find a key nearby to unlock Siegward Cell because, as it turns out, drinking motor oil is illegal in Lothric. So bust him out of jail, and he'll give you a titanite slab to complete your pyro glove. You can find another key near where the giant hangs out, and this will unlock the cell of a goth girl named Carla. I don't know what she's in for, but in any case, you can give her the tome you picked up from Brad's Boneyard, and Carla will sell you Black Fire Orb. This pyromancy deals dark damage instead of fire, which is important, since it turns out that Yorm the Giant is 100% flame retardant. So slip on the Dark Clutch Ring and go to town on him. Sigurd will be there to back you up for this fight, being the true bro that he is. Headshots will do a lot of damage to Yorm, and you should have ample opportunity to get some when Sigurd knocks him to his knees. Once the fight's over, Sigurd might be a little tired out, so just pick him up and bring him with you for future adventures. Now in order to complete your fashion setup, you may want to buy the untrue dark ring from Yuria, as wearing it will make you look human again. So remember, don't fall for expensive skin treatment schemes when you can just buy a magic ring. Anyways, you're basically the ultimate pyromancer by now since the final bosses of the game are vulnerable to dark damage. So yeah, that's it. That's how you become a serial arsonist. You're welcome.